Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. Here we go again. Um, I am having some issues here. I think one is internal. And uh, two is carburetor settings. Three, the timing was out. Um, so I'm going to go over that stuff with you guys today. And, uh, but I do want to show you something when you watch this carburetor right here. Watch what happens. We'll start switch here. It is spinning. <clears throat> Fuel. through the carb, which tells me that a valve is not sealed or something's going on in there. Um, the timing was off by one tooth on the one head here. Um, the carburetor settings, are they were all whacked out. And um, so I'm going to go over that now. And I'm going to go over a couple of cool features that I do like about this kit. And... Uh, so here we go, guys. Grab your favorite smoke beverage popcorn and hang out with me today. Okay. <clears throat> here we go. First, we're going to do the timing. Ah, uh, let me see. It is close. Now, I had to get on the Toyin Engine website. Um, you got to sign in there, and you can look at the whole schematic of this engine. See, I got mine together because I wanted to do a reversed thing. We'll get it running first and then tear it down for you guys. Looks like I'm tearing it down sooner than I think. Um, anyways, on your, this is your crankshaft. These are your camshafts. Okay. You're going to see, I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys get a really good look here of what is going on. And hopefully you can see this. Now, you're going to see a little timing mark here. And you're going to see these two dots on your crankshafts, or camshafts, I mean, up here. Now, according to the website, um, Twain Engine, this goes to the, to the right. Okay. The two dots... On the camshaft go straight up all right so when I couldn't get mine started I couldn't figure out why um, between the carbs being out of whack as adjustment wise and the timing belt this cam was over here this button the little mark was way over here so I had took in the bottom it's just as an idler or fully here this is, this is your crankshaft, like I say, cam, cam. I just undid this, it turned this back, and it started right up. Now, um, another thing that I am dealing with is leakage. My God, this thing just pukes everywhere. Um, they give you eight rubber O-rings um, on your exhaust, which I went over in my other video there. They give you eight of these little O-rings. You're gonna have to put, you're gonna have to double these up because they don't fit snugly and seal, <clears throat> which is a disaster because here's what'll happen. Once it starts spinning fuel out of these leaky exhaust parts here and it still has some nitro in it and you go to start it again, you're going to get a spark out of your starter down here, and it's going to light this thing up in flames. So always be careful. Run it outside or somewhere near a fire extinguisher or somewhere where you can put it out. Um, that's happened to me once already. Um, let me see. Now the carb settings. Now this is going to be... These new carburetors, um, I even got on their... Um, the Toyin engine website downloaded the schematic of how this is assembled and they say one and a half turns on your low end in here 
and two out here. That don't work. Um, these guys got, I'm going to have to contact them and let them know. Here's the way I got mine started. Five turns out on the low end. First, here's how you do this. Inside, set your throttle. You got to synchronize these because these are out of whack too. You got to synchronize your throttle openings in here to 1.5 millimeter. At least that, okay? 1.5, 1.5. Then you can turn your main needles out six turns on both carbs. Six turns. Turn that little screw. Now that you've got a baseline set up for your throttle, turn it all the way in, turn it out six, six um, times. And then do your low end adjustment, turn it all the way in, and turn it all the way out five and a half, you know, somewhere around there. You might have to dial it in back and forth depending on what brand fuel you use, what your barometric pressure is, and the humidity and all that stuff plays a big part. So I got it running. Now, like I say, it's huffing pure raw fuel and um, exhaust smoke out of the carburetor, which tells me one of the valves is not sealed. So I'm going to have to tear this apart to look inside it. But as far as the, the tensioner on the, um, the camshaft, you know, cam belt and the starter belt, this is great. This is so quiet. It doesn't strain the engine whatsoever. You know, I'll let you hear it again. It doesn't strain it at all. It just turns it right over. Nice and quiet, you know, and the motor doesn't really heat up, which is cool. So that's good. Now I tore the stacks off the carbs because I wanted to look inside and see where my main needle, how they, you know, my uh, throttle position with the air gap in there, 1.5 millimeters. So I had to tear them apart. Now I did mention prior in my other video, I thought there was a screen inside here. There's not. What it was was a reflection of the machined work inside this case. And it looked like a screen, so it's not. All right. Um, now, I wanted to get to the starting thing here they got the set up for starters. This is pretty awesome. I'm going to back this up here. I want you guys to kind of look at this. Now, this is all kind of plugged in together. It's got a push button switch. It's got your, I'm using a three cell 11.1 volt to run um, the igniters and um, which are here they got the micro igniters which I've had built many times on my uh, other cars they got them four into one you can unplug them too here um, and this here is your starter relay with your push button and when you plug in the juice you get a direct voltage to your glow plugs and your push button start will start your engine which is pretty unique nice setup there um, I know those micro relays sometimes blow out if they get too hot but if you just kick the you know if you get your carb settings okay and check your cam settings you know it'll be it should fire right up then you can dial it in from there so but anyway, so far, I like the engine. Um, I was playing with the carbs back and forth, back and forth. And your fuel tank level, it's very sensitive to that. Your fuel tank has to be at least, you know, somewhere around here, height-wise, to feed both these carburetors. Because um, I noticed when it's over full, when it sets down lower, it runs. And if you pick it up too high, it drowns it and shuts it off. So it's very sensitive to the draw of the fuel. And um, But tearing it down was very simple. It's a plastic cover in the front. I removed the muffler. It's just a plastic cover that slides over and sets in. And then it has oh a small little spacer here that bolts to your crankshaft like so 
and it runs the little pulley with the belt to run your cooling fan uh, for your air cooled system. So, but anyways, this is an update on it. I'm still working on it, and uh, I got some things to do today, so I won't be able to get back on this today. And uh, like I said, I just wanted to give you guys an update of the engine, and I think it's not revving because um, it's getting blow by through one of the valves here, and it seems like no matter how I tweak those carbs, it, it you know it would try to rev and then it would you could you could hear the resistance inside the engine where it was just pushing the charge back out so but anyways guys usually i get my engines and kits and all that and this one i wanted to do as a complete unit just to see because i've had a lot of questions on i can't get mine running i bought the complete unit and it's already assembled i can't get it running well, now that I have ventured into this, I, I can see why. Because the carburetor settings, f around five on your low side, six on your high side, you can tweak them from there. If you have any blow-by in here, you're going to have to tear things apart. And check your timing. Make sure these two little nubs here are, these two little dots are straight up. And your other dot here is here. So... If you look at it there up up so all right guys now nah, my earlier videos there I showed you it was huffing some exhaust gases and spitting fuel out really bad <clears throat> and I noticed when I first started it I always try to do a temperature check on the engine itself um, the engine was relatively all the same temperature except this head right here and uh, the valve cover it was extremely warming up fast. I couldn't figure it out. Um, so I tore it down. And uh, on my last video, I said there's got to be something internally wrong on this side. And uh, so like I said before, I will be tearing it apart. Okay, I got both of the rocker covers off. Valve covers, whatever you want to call them. And uh, now this is the side. That seems to be running okay. And you see there's lots of grease still on there from the factory. They really packed it up pretty nice. And uh, this was the normal temperature side. Now, we'll look at the Abbey normal temperature side. What do you see there? That grease turned to liquid. And it just ran out like water. Which tells me that... There's a exhaust valve problem here somewhere because it got really hot. And if it was an intake problem, then it would just sputter and sputter. But being that it's firing and the exhaust valve opens, that tells me that hot exhaust gas is coming right into here to one of these two um, valves. So it's blowing in here. And once it pressurizes this, it goes back through the intake because it gets sucked through everything down here and in here. So that's why it was huffing exhaust gases out of this. So I'm going to tear this cylinder head off. And uh, I'm glad I already figured out the timing and all that stuff. One thing I did want to mention, um, I thought it was odd that this thing leaked so much. But I thought that there was only one um, crankcase relief nipple. But there is two. There's one over here hidden. It was kind of hidden behind the starter wire over here. And so this expels all the extra oil out of the crankcase that lubricates the, the crankshaft. And uh, and anyways, I, I thought I had it under control over here, but I couldn't figure out where it was coming from here. So between, I need to double the gaskets up on the uh, headers, and I need to run two... Um, tubes off the crankcase into a drain system where it'll actually work you know so that was part of that problem so anyways I, I didn't think I was going to get a video back up today because I had so many things to do well I started doing them and of course my life it uh, you know 
it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any. I, I, in the middle of everything, uh, my truck blew a brake line. So, <laughs> I had to laugh about it, you know. It's, it's funny when you're at the most stressful time in your life, one little thing like that, it just like, almost wants to put you over the edge. So, it was kind of like that movie, Money Pit, when the tub fell through the floor with Tom Hanks, and he just hysterically laughed, that's what I did, and I said, no, I'm going to go home and play with the engine. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I wanted to put that video up about this here. So I got to tear this cylinder head off and tear the valves out to try to see what's going on here because that's not normal. You should not have fuel in the top of your cylinder head on one side and grease, which is normal, on the other side. So we got a problem over here. So I'm going to figure it out and I'll contact them to go from there. Now, it, it is a good engine, don't get me wrong, but I'm glad that I went down this road. Um, I'm glad I got an assembled kit, because when I put an engine together, um, a lot of people out there think that, oh, I get the perfect versions from them. No, I put them together. Um, I've only had one or two um, engines that were complete that I got from them, and uh, so this is not a... Um, a toy and engine problem it's an assembly problem so whoever put this stuff together um, either missed something something you know that when they're banging these out things fall out of them you know and so the engine itself is a really good engine it's just once it would not rev I could figure out that it was something something over on this side of the engine was holding that side back from revving up and you can hear the thing straining. It's, it's like having dual exhaust on your car and somebody stuffs a potato in one of your tailpipes. Um, you know, one bank ain't going to breathe like the other one is, you know. And so I figured that out between the heat problem and the way it was running. Uh, I know there's something wrong in here, and I will try to figure it out. And I'll try to put that on my next video. So... All right, loved all. Like, share, subscribe if you want, and I will catch you later, man. Adios.